Hello, welcome once again to Whispers in the Theater. I'm your host, the Whispering Gardener Shu, here to continue our exciting tale, The Other Side of Myth, Chapter 12. A dead man came to town. Who was the mysterious girl with the caramel lips, citron eyes, and long brown hair? Who was the radiant girl making an innocent maiden in the night, with her admiring gaze and long pearl dress? She stood a couple inches taller than Kiara, but despite height, there was a smallness that made Kiara want to protect her. Her heart skipped a beat as she thought of the kiss, and the girl's bronze skin flushed. She thought of Tristan, and had to mute the pain swelling in her chest. It almost changed the look on her face but she stopped it before the final stone set. The girl did not question the lapse, however. Eyes focused on something unseen. She turned to Diana and bowed. My name is Piala, she said. I thank you both for saving my life. She bowed to Kiara, too. The scarlet-eyed girl shook her head. We couldn't just leave you while you were calling for help. She smiled. Piala's eyes widened. You two heard that. She stepped back. She smiled, beaming. And I think it was very good that we met. She said it was such an honest truth that they could not help but feel their pride bloom. I think it was bound to happen, Danson said as he stepped onto the roof. Kago followed suit. Both boys seemed groggy as they shambled forward, but the alertness in their eyes said they would not miss out on this discussion. Piala, was it? Can you tell us why you were being pursued? Danson said. Kiara's eyes widened. I told them everything after I dispatched the other puppets. I figured Danson could just track our oars to find us. Diana said. Kiara flushed at her obvious surprise. Wait. Kago held out his hand. Let's get to the inn first. I don't feel like having a talk on someone's roof. He grumbled, and the others mumbled in agreement. A few minutes later they found themselves in the lavish conjoined rooms of an inn. The boys set their room up. Kago dragged the chair into the connecting doorway. He sat with his legs drawn up. Diana and Kiara sat on a bed watching Piala as she silently worked pieces of her story together. Danson yawned at a table, slouching forward, trying to stay up. The yawn rushed Piala to a decision, and the change in her demeanor from shy to determined was enough to give them a second wind. Her story began a few nights ago, when a man came to town. He came in dead silence, lit by the poor lighting at the gate, casting a shadow to shroud the road behind him. In dark clothes of little detail and a wooden mask with intricate carvings, he seemed like a nightmare, fresh from a victim's mind. No words followed his arrival, but there came the whisper of steel, putting lounging guards on alert. A dead man walked to the gate, 
until he passed it by, leaving corpses in his wake. Bells towed, and guards moved to action, but in his shadow lurked other men, cutting down any that dared to draw near. He cut a path through the town, waking it with screams, drawing the people to the square where the last guard fell. The man and his army took the stage and made a decree. I have come for one thing. If you hand it over, I will take no other life. His blade glistened. His dark clothes were stained red. Bring me the girl known as Piola. I will await the delivery in the manor on the hill. For too long, that empty estate had been ominous, and now it truly seemed like it was an omen. I will give you a few nights to decide how this will go. And in a couple cents, Piola decided the town didn't deserve the curse of choice. Why didn't you just go to the enforcers? Kago asked. Piala hung her head. My mother and father do not believe it will be best. If they did, we'd have to tell them why this man attacked us, and they don't want the enforcers to take me away. Not like it would have worked, Danson said. A lot of enforcers got pulled into the skirmish. They'll probably be busy until they're sure they root the rebels out. Kago nodded, turning back to Piala. You ran away so your town didn't have to chew, but I'm guessing the dead man already had a plan for that. Yes, he had some retrievers prepared. They caught up to me within a day. If he came to your town with an army, could these people be rebels? Kiara asked. Piala shook her head. We believe that they are mercenaries. We don't know why they were in the calm lands, but we know that they are loyal to the masked man. How do you know that? And why are you so sure? Diana asked. For the same reason, honestly. My father is an oracle, and he saw exactly who the stranger is. The room itself seemed to hold his breath. Bernard Cucumber. Her voice quivered, and the room gasped. That can't be right. Diana brought a hand to her chest. Bernard Cucumber, as in the hero of the tribes? That cucumber? Kago cocked an eyebrow. The cucumber so fierce, even our elven schools teach about him. Danson shook his head. Who is this guy? Kiara raised her hand, and the boys turned their gaze on Diana. They call him the hero of the tribes. Northeast of the Comlands, where we are now, you have the Greenlands, composed of Nathelin and the Expanse. The Expanse is a pretty untamed place, home to hundreds of different tribes. It's not uncommon for affluent Nathelenites to seek land in the Expanse, but there was a time when that was the way of the era. The Expanse was always under attack. Entire tribes would disappear to massacre or slavery. Bernard Cucumber was one of those slaves. He was taken when he was small, and later bought by a Nathelen commander who didn't have an heir. He was so confident in his skills that he thought any student could inherit his name. And sure enough, he was right. Bernard climbed through the ranks of the army and eventually found himself on a campaign. When he encountered a warrior tribe, he found out where he came from and why so many of his allies hated him. He defected acting with this tribe to protect others. He sounds amazing, Kiara said. 
mind painting the portrait of this figure? He was. Diana nodded. Cucumber changed how Nutella interacted with the Expanse, and vice versa. With the warrior tribe, he moved all over the land, always a threat to any desperate and greedy noble. It inspired other tribes to raise warriors too, eventually sending them to stand by Cucumber's side. They became known as the Faithless Tribe, one that would welcome anyone who'd fight for the homes of others. For a group without faces, the hero of the tribe became the only one they needed. They still fight to this day, forever following Cucumber's philosophy. So he's dead then? For forty years now. Except... Diana turned to Piola. Not anymore. The girl sighed. My father is a skilled oracle, too. It would be very difficult for him to make an error of this magnitude. Kiara asked. How bad is Cucumber exactly? The short answer is bad enough that we're alarmed by the name Cucumber. Diana replied. The long answer, or at least a part of it, is that Cucumber the cautionary tale to young elves. Instructors use him as proof that some people are dangerous even without magic. Dunson said, My brother used to talk about him. Kago added, Cucumber was a legend in the Battleless Mountains. One of the Greenland noble houses hired some of the strongest fighters to work for them, and not one came home the victor. And that's assuming they came home at all. Nodding. Dunson met Piala's eyes. It really raises the question. Who did you cross to get Cucumber revived and sent after you? The girl hung her head again. Kiara shook her own. We're really talking about a dead man right now. She stared blankly ahead. If it's any consolation, it is strange, Kiara. Bringing someone back from the dead isn't easy magic, nor magic you can just get your hands on. I hear there used to be a school for it in the Darklands, but even then, it wasn't that commonplace. Diana patted her shoulder. Piala squirmed, but took a breath and spoke. I'm sorry. My parents don't want me to just say outright. However... If you help me, they'll tell you and even compensate. Danson smirked. Bernard Cucumber had been brought back from the dead and turned against the girl with a secret enemy. By her oracle father's words, she runs off to Red Allure and happens upon... He looked over the group. A mixed-matched band of travelers. The word fit well. Haven't had an encounter this exciting since I first met Diana. Now I have to decide if I should blame her for this, or Kiara. Have you ever met a new person and not had an exciting encounter? Kago cocked an eyebrow. Dunson shook his head. You're probably the one who broke that streak. I don't believe that, and I know you don't either. The boys laughed together and Diana moved closer to Kiara's ear. See what I mean? This is what we're in for. She whispered and smirked. Kiara was wide-eyed, but the ease with which they swallowed the story made her a little confident. Maybe Piala was a piece of a trap, carefully laid to snare the three. If she was, they didn't care. There was certainty they'd make it out of the situation alive. Who should Danson blame for this? She thought it might be her, but it didn't seem she had much fault to bear. Danson thought deeply, and Kiara thought about the circumstances. She supposed they didn't have the option to turn Piola down. If saying no was as catastrophic as Mortinor suggested, 
Who knew how the world would change on the other end? Piala had given them a bit of information, but seemed to hold a part of herself back. As Kiara looked at her, she saw a scared girl, trying her best to stand tall to prepare for rejection. She wouldn't know what to do after this, but Kiara could imagine her trying to find a way. Cucumber was a threat despite his name. She couldn't imagine him letting the girl go. Kiara couldn't quite measure the legend, but it was clear Piala would face titans if she must. What do you all say? Danson looked at them. Kiara nodded, and Diana shrugged. Well, I'm not going to send her off with a plea to the stars. Kago smiled. This will be a good chance for us to test our mettle. The elf nodded, with a smile of his own. We'll help, he said. And though she still stood poised, they could feel Piala relax. And regardless of how Cucumber came back, we'll just slice him up and scatter his pieces all over. Kago grinned. The girl chuckled, wiping the start of tears from her eyes. Then let's go get some food. No point in playing bodyguard on an empty stomach. Diana headed for the door, and the boys tailed her. Kiara stood to follow too, when Piola took her hand, holding her back. It surprised her how much strength the girl had and when she showed that and her confusion, Piala fought a battle of embarrassment with determination. Before you go, can I ask a question? Though her kiss was caramel, her touch was something else. Are you afraid of your own magic? She asked, and Kiara felt the touch on the fabric of her soul. She thought to say no, but the touch made her feel like the truth would be all right. Piala radiated kindness, and in her soft gaze Kiara could not even find a seed of judgment. She saw curiosity, concern, and perhaps a plan for hope. She saw a request to only speak the truth. Most of all, she saw herself running away from the past. It was how she got to Magdalia in the first place. Piala needed her help, but wanted to help her first. Kiara turned completely to the girl, staring that version of herself down. Both she and it were still afraid. But now was the time to meet the monster on her heels. Chapter 12 Ends And so too ends another episode of Whispers in the Theater. I would be delighted if you were to join me once again.